starting lineup, uniforms, and apparel will present the WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League Podcast. Hello once again everybody, Andrew Rogers here, the host of the WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League Podcast. It's uh, great to be back with you once again. Thank you very much to Mitch Scott of the starting lineup, uniforms and apparel. He is our presenting sponsor, and uh, we always like to give him a little bit of recognition off the top just for uh, being a part and uh, hopping on board with us to support this great podcast. Um, It's going really well so far. Um, I I honestly am flabbergasted every time I I do an almost uh, unordinarily amount of... (laughs) I do an odd amount of checking just to see how many how many views these videos uh, get, and I am honestly uh, very shocked every time I look. Um, I know our runaway leader in terms of viewership is uh, the Kyler Nixon podcast, and uh, it's not even close. It, it, it I was just blown away by how many views that podcast got, and uh, well, it speaks to the the league and the player and uh, the conversation. It, it really was great to talk with him, and he had a lot of great things to say. Uh, our last episode featured Cole Pellet of the Lockdown Lancers. It was great talking with Cole. Uh, he's a great guy, and uh, we look forward to having him back on the podcast should that uh, eventually happen, which we hope it will, uh, because it's uh, it was great to talk with him about uh, his experience in the in the Senior A League and with Lucknow, and uh, talk about the season and everything else. So that was great, and uh, we uh, we move onward. Uh, we've got a slew of guests that we. Uh, are have been reaching out to and that we have upcoming and it's only going to get better i i believe uh today on the podcast it's episode number eight we're at now and uh we're going to feature barry trude here in a moment from the shelver muskies he's a general manager over there barry's been around the league for a long time he's got a keen eye and a key sense of the game and we really look forward like i really look forward to talking with him and picking his brain about this league so that's coming up shortly here um on our next episode after this, it's going to come Monday, and it's going to feature Trevor Lord and Andrew Whalen of the Alora Rocks. Um, after that, we have Brad Burton and Nathan Ansel of the Clinton Radars. Uh, they're going to be here on episode number 11. That comes your way on Wednesday. Next Friday, we actually feature Garrett Muirs of the Ripley Wolves. That's uh, very exciting. We're going to... We're, we're really excited. I'm really excited to have Garrett on because, uh, well, he was your leading scorer in the WOAA Senior AA Men's League last year. And, uh, you know, he was uh, right in the thick of things all season long with the top seed Ripley Wolves and uh, with their uh, semifinal matchup against Minto that uh, was tied at two before the season uh, was uh, determined cancelled. So it'll be interesting to pick his brain about the game and uh, his take on that. Uh, we've also talked uh, to Jake Prudhomme. He is uh, one of the assistant coaches on the Petrolia Squires. He's going to be joining us uh, after that, uh, the next guest after Garrett. The next episode after that is very interesting. We will be featuring Reed and Chad Schwarzentruber. This is going to be really interesting to talk to these two. Um, Reed, of course, playing for the Lucknow Lancers, while uh, Tilsonberg is the team that Chad plays for. So it would be really interesting to have them two on the podcast and then our final confirmed guest that we have is going to be coming up on the following friday two weeks from now it'll be uh june 5th will be the date of that and it'll be it'll be featured featuring uh, scott stafford of the tilsonberg thunder uh so like i say slew of guests coming up very exciting uh and we're really looking forward to having all of them on to talk hockey and talk about the senior a league and talk about what's going on with them and uh I'm sure they got lots they want to talk about, so it'd be really interesting to have them on, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but let's get on to more important things. Uh, we have Barry Trude coming up here from the Shelburne Muskies. He's our general manager. He's our guest on this uh, today's episode of the podcast, WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League, episode number eight. All right, at this time, we are pleased to welcome in our guest. Uh, he is the general manager of the Shelburne Muskies, and... Uh, one uh, one stand up uh, a real stand up guy. His name is Barry Trude, and we welcome him in. Barry, it's great to have you on here. Welcome. Uh, thanks, Andrew. I appreciate you uh, uh, having me on your show, and you're doing a great job over there. 
Hey, I thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing it for the, the praise and admiration, but I do definitely appreciate that part. Um, Barry, it's uh, great to talk with you. Um, first question I usually have for anyone that comes on here is, uh, you know, COVID really hit a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Uh, how have you been affected by that? Has much changed for you in the day to day? Yeah, well, interesting, Andrew. I, I just retired last year. I had a, a 35 plus year, uh, career in uh, I was superintendent with the water and wastewater so I just retired I had a retirement at 58 and I knocked her in and I certainly wasn't uh, planning on uh, this happening this summer and uh, I, I I actually had to cancel a uh, visit with my daughter who uh, my oldest daughter who lives in London England I was uh, had the plane tickets booked and oh, we were in March and uh, we were leaving on a Sunday and uh, got canceled. We canceled on the Friday and just as well because all the cancellations and all sure. the rest of the stuff was going on at that particular time. So, uh, yeah, it's difficult. I've got another daughter who lives in Calgary. So, um, you know, it's a lot of FaceTiming, that sort of stuff going on. Yeah. And my, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, so it, it's affected me. Uh, obviously, you, you can't get out like you used to. And it's, uh, uh, sports wise, it's, uh, it's been a killer. I, I, I'm also president of the minor lacrosse in Shelburne. Okay. And, uh, that has just been ongoing. They keep delaying that and the inevitable is happening. I, I think most of the leagues have, uh, shelved their, their season this year, but they haven't officially, uh, done that from the Ontario Lacrosse Association yet. Right. But, uh, I, I sent that forthcoming. I, I did happen to hear, so I, I did some, I've done some following in the past for the, uh, um, Old Sound Senior B North Stars. They play uh, uh, senior. Yeah. What is it? Uh, senior B. C- C- yeah, exactly. And yeah. Uh, I know they're. Well, I think it's the Ontario Series Lacrosse. Like it's the OSL or something yeah. like that. Yep. Yeah. They've announced that they've canceled the upcoming season for sure. I did yeah, see that. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The big league uh, canceled, which is the the major league is the is the big league where right. most of the pro players come from. Yeah. Uh, they just shelved it last week. Uh, same with the senior B. You mentioned Old Sound right. has the senior B team. They've they shelved it. Uh, that league got shelved last weekend. Uh, you know, uh, interestingly, uh, the Junior C League and uh, it, it shelved it well over a month on their own. And one of the other smaller minor leagues uh, decided against it. But usually, the clubs wait for the OLA to respond first. But uh, right. I think it's just a, a domino happening now, and uh, uh, it's probably a good move because I, I just don't see it happening uh, in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, it's it's really hard to imagine what the future does hold for sports in general, not just hockey, but all across the board and and yeah, how absolutely. they're able to survive like how they're able to survive based on everyone's fear and based on what it would actually end up looking like and if it could actually survive on those merits yeah correct it, it, it's a difficult situation I, I i know myself i i i'm not sure i'm very comfortable in even having kids uh playing in a uh a modified version because all it takes is one player to pick it up something, and right. uh, then you've got maybe nine or ten or twelve or whatever they're yeah. coming up with uh, in quarantine for two weeks right. uh, uh, under that scenario. And so it's not it's not a very comfortable situation to be in. No, no, it definitely is not. Um, so Barry, uh, we brought you on to talk about senior hockey, and um, yeah. you you've been around for a very 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 long time in this in this senior league, especially with Shelburne. Um, I guess over the years, I mean, what's the biggest difference that you've noticed? I mean, I, there's got to be tons, I'm sure, but what's one of the biggest ones that you've seen that you've been most impressed with, I guess? Well, I, I think you're right, Andrew. It, it, the game has changed, uh, you know, uh, a lot over the years. And, you know, I, I, I myself had come up through a, as a player, as a coach, and now I'm a GM. And uh, and you're right, it seems like I've been here forever and probably <laughs> feels like it too at times. But uh, I... I Definitely the speed uh, as, as picked up in the league. The players are, uh, I would suggest, they're uh, more uh, talented, you know, stick handlers, for example, and right. skate, skate better. And I, I think that's emphasized in minor hockey now, and uh, it, it's, it's changed the game quite a bit. Uh, not suggesting for a minute the players weren't good, uh, you know, even 20, 30 years ago. There was a lot of good hockey players, but there was a, a little bit more of a physical presence in the right. game that's probably not there now. Or not, or, or not as much. Let's put it that way. Sure. I, I mean, the biggest thing that I've noticed in the short time that I've followed this league. I mean, yeah, I watched it when I was growing up, when I was a little bit younger, and you know, I, I've followed it more prominently because of my, you know, with with different sports projects that I've taken on. And the biggest thing that I've noticed is that it's not an old man's game anymore. It's a young man's game. You know what I mean by that? Yeah, absolutely. 
absolutely. Uh, yeah, and, you, and it, it, it's very uh, speed driven. You know, some of the players, uh, you know, I am uh, uh, amazed on, on, on all clubs. Uh, you know, right. uh, that some of the, uh, the the speed these players have uh, uh, can carry through, and, and it's uh, it's emphasized uh, in practices. Uh, you know, now from when the kids are little, right? And right. you know, I, I think back when I was playing. You know, you dump the puck in the corner, your first man takes the the player out, and the second man <laughs> takes the puck. Right. That was kind of the strategy then. Now there's a lot, you know. A lot of circling in the corners, this sort of stuff. Uh, right. Puck possession uh, goes on in the, in the league. Yeah, like I mean, this league. I mean, it used to be like I think you could you could honestly, you know, and I'm not trying to criticize, but like back in the day, this league it used to be rock'em sock'em, old time hockey. It used to be, you know, there was a lot more emphasis on the enforcer of the the roles of the within the team, but now it seems like it's very skill driven. It's very you know, yeah. offensively gifted and like all these players, man, the talent, like you said, like it's, it's just unbelievable. The transition that's happened from then till now. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Andrew, the, uh, the, the, the days of the enforcer, they're gone. It's not unlike the, uh, prof- you know, the NHL, for example, those, there's very few. And if they are kicking around, they've also got talent to go along with it. Right. Uh, but it, yeah, you, you've got to be able to skate in this league now and, and have puck control. And that's what the emphasis is on these days, as opposed to, you know, uh, guys with physical, you know, uh, capabilities. Uh, back in my day, uh, you know, you had you had some skilled players, but obviously sure. there was uh, a few uh, guys who could enforce uh, a bit of physical play as well, right? Uh, which has been taken out of the game. And and, and it, I think that's a credit to to hockey. I think it's uh, long overdue as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, as far as the product on the ice goes, I think in today's modern society, I think it has to be more watchable. It has to be viewable. It has to be enjoyable. It has to be more, I don't want to say PG, but it's got to at least be entertaining to a point where you're not just going out and being like, man, I got to cover my kid's eyes in the crowd because I don't want him to see what's happening to, say, his father or, you know, his uh, older brother or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. You know, we, even in terms of strategy from coaching, it, it's different. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, uh, let's put it, uh, voices coming from the right. benches towards the even the referees uh, sure. uh, back in the day. You don't see much of that anymore. Right. Um, yeah, it, it, it's changed. And like I said, I, I think it's for the better. They, with the kids should be able to play. Well, kids and adults should be able to play the hockey uh, without being worried about being drilled into the boards or, you know, taking a fist to the face or whatever. Right. And uh, and I think that's a, a good step. Like, don't get me wrong, Barry. I'm not saying that this league is like a pushover in the sense that it's just no. all, you know, guys skating around like, you know, figure skaters, for example. No. I'm saying there are still guys that have physical presence to their game and that's an that's a, a necessity especially for some of the smaller guys going up against bigger players you kind of need that little physical bit of to your game to be successful Correct. but but what i'm saying though is that like you know these the the physical the physicalness has to be there for it to be competitive but it's not the same as going out and trying to kill the guy because Everybody, I think, has a legitimate worry about making sure that their physical health and well-being is taken care of at the end of the day. Uh, absolutely. I mean, and, and I, I, you know, I look back and, you know, the, uh, the gentlemen in this league have to go to work, you know, uh, and the last thing they need is uh, to be missing days from work uh, over hockey that's unnecessary, uh, you know, hits um, for sure. Well, and that's just it. Like, they got a family to go home to, and they got a yep. job to go to where they make money. Like, you know, it's just there's so much more importance outside of the game that they don't want to have to come to the rink to go to a game and worry that they're not going to make it back in one piece afterwards. And, like, most of the guys, they know each other in this league, too. Yeah, they, they do. It's a, it's a <laughs> very social league, and it, that's emphasized. Uh, uh, yeah, the this, this switchover has, has happened over, the, you know, I'd say the last 20 years for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and to, to the best for, for the league and, uh, and to the fans as well. I think it's a, a, a lot better league this way and uh, it'll attract players to the league. Right. Now, one thing I noticed, and, and this is just you know my personal opinion on the matter, is that this league kind of is, is, this league is, is kind of like a, a fine wine and it's aged very well and it's been able to keep 
that the momentum that it's had going in terms of the fan base. There's always going to be those reliable fans that you know are always going to be sticking like, you know, true to the team that they follow and they're always going to be there. They're not going to waver. The thing is though is that this game and well, society in general has evolved to a more of a social media following. And I think that's where this league is kind of lacking to a sense like what do you think they need to do to become more, like the league needs to do to become more successful in that area? Well, people like you getting involved. Uh, you know, I myself, I, I'm a bit of an old old school guy, right? It, but I, I'm I'm not blind enough to know that uh, social media certainly uh, can help our league in so many ways, and which is what you have done, right? And uh, I, I know teams tend to post things now where you can do that before, you know, right. years ago it was you had to wait for the newspaper to come out and get something, uh, you know, a sure. week later about the, the team and the results from the week. And uh, now it's it's on the spot sort of stuff going on now. Right. And you, you need that stuff. You don't have it. Well, you're going to hear it uh, from the players and the fans now, you know, which wasn't the case, obviously, 20 years ago before all social media sure. uh, took hold. I just, I just think, like I say, I mean, in part of what my, what drives me to, in doing what I do is because, yeah, I think people do need that instant update. They, they're so used to that from all the big, big four sports and all the media outlets that have that stuff covered almost instantaneously as it's happening. Where I think with yeah. our league is we're, we're just not there yet in terms of getting there. But I think, I think what will drive more people to, a, you know, to, to this league in general would be that instant access, this, that instant ability to figure out, okay, this is what's going on. We want to know right away when it's happening and as it's happening. Correct, yeah. And it, and it takes time. Eh? It, it, yeah. You know, whether it's you, you, get, you, know, you take your, your tapes of the game and you got to uh, format it and all the rest of the stuff. Right. And it's no different than me when I go home after a game. I, I'm, you know, sometimes I'm leaving the bar at, uh, <laughs> upstairs at our game at, say, I don't know, 12, 30, 1 o'clock, and then I sure. go home and I post, Say on our Facebook page, for example, and yeah. uh, get our results out because I know people are going to be looking for it. Right, of course. And it's, someone's got to do this stuff. And, no, absolutely. Uh, it, it, and we're we're getting more of those people on online now, but uh, uh, it, it's a slow progress, and, and it certainly has room for improvement for sure. Right. No, I agree with that. I did, like I say, having done what I did last year, learned a lot from that experience, and learned kind of what needs to be the next step to take now because. The, 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 the potential is endless here, and I think you can agree with me on that. And yeah. it's just so exciting to me about the possibilities that could become of that potential. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's so much potential in this league. You know, it, 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 the league's very resilient uh, over the years. You know, I've seen, uh, you know, uh, if you look at the AAA, the OHA, AAA Senior League, right. that thing's bounced around teams. So, I don't know, the teams they've had in the last, I think they were down to four last year. Right. And uh, they've moved uh, 10 years ago, and none of those teams are in the league right. type of thing. So, we, we, we've, uh, you know, we've had teams going in and out. There's no question about that. Teams kind of go, but we always had a, you know, a base of about 14 to 16 teams. Right. Teams in, in our league, and uh, which is, it speaks miles through the communities that are in the league and the people that look after these teams. Uh, uh, it, it's amazing. It really is, and it's, it's great hockey. No, I, I couldn't agree with you more. It, it, it honestly, that's what I love about this league is that it is so great and that there are so many people that, that put it all together. And not to mention the, the product on the ice is just unbelievable. I think it's just so impressive to watch. The, the, it's be, I think it's different from watching, say, the OHL, which is also very local in some spots. Yeah. Watching the OHL, those guys, they're fighting for jobs. They're getting paid to do what they do. They're fighting to make it into the NHL. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, you know, things to do there. Like if you watch the AHL, it's the same thing, kind of the same thing, sort of. Guys that have been demoted down, trying to fight their way back. But there's just, it's just different in the sense where I feel like with the senior hockey guys, they're playing because they love the game. They're playing for the community. They're playing for their family members. They're playing for more than just, you know, more than the spotlight, more for, more than, you know, whatever, all the hoopla. They're just playing because they love the game. Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. I, I seen that, you know, some of the, the, your cast you've had on already, some of the players, and you speak to the community, and I think that's what is a driver in this league, is the communities they come from. And, uh, you know, local players playing in the league, you right. know, the fans know them. 
Right. You know, know him personally, not maybe, uh, not just from hockey. It could be, you know, from work or, or, you know, shopping at the local grocery store. Right. I mean, this is the type of, uh, league this is driven. I think this is why this league is successful as well. You know, uh, it's small town, uh, hockey. And, uh, you know, yeah. I, I personally love it. Love well, and, and the great thing about it too, and I've spoken to this with a couple of the other people, like I said, that I've had on before, is that this league offers you the most competitive hockey that you can play once your junior career is finished. Correct. Yep. That's what makes it so great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I'm full agreement with that. Yeah. There's uh, not much you can, more you can add to that. You, you know, no. you, it's, it's just an enjoyable league to, to watch. It's, a, it's an enjoyable league to be a part of. I, no, I agree, and I, I've had I've had an unbelievable experience being a part of it, and and I only look forward to more. The, obviously, the question is is whether or not that's going to be possible this upcoming season. We'll get to that in a minute. We're talking with Barry True, the general manager of the Shelburne Muskies. Uh, we want to talk. I want to talk to you about Shelburne more specifically. Now we've talked about the league, we've talked about how great it is, but I want to talk to you about Shelburne. Now you've been around this team for a long time. What did you notice in compare? Like you guys were actually one of the talk of the biggest surprises of the year because you guys went from a team that was 500 like a year prior, where you guys just missed out on the Double A playoffs. I think you finished maybe ninth, I want to say. And yeah. and yep. then you, and then you turn it around and you guys go 17 and five this year, finish second place. An unbelievable turnaround. What do you owe? What, like what could, if you could pick something to say? Okay, this is why we were so successful in one year to the other. Well, you know, you know, um, in my my case, I I'm not overly surprised the team did as well as they are. They're the hardest working, in my opinion, they're the hardest working team in the league. Yeah. These guys come to practice, and I, I would suggest ninety percent of the players are there at all the practices. Uh, you know, because I'm there watching and right. seeing what's going on as well. We've got great coaching. Uh, our head coach. Uh, Tyler Hogan, uh, he used to play for the team. He stepped in two years ago when our, our, our other coach, uh, Dave Ritchie, who was an exceptional coach as well, right. uh, had to uh, step down because of job uh, issues. Right. Um, so Tyler stepped in, and he's an amazing coach. Yeah, he's Just a great an guy. Amazing coach. Yeah, he's, yeah, Tyler's a big guy. Uh, you know, generally soft-spoken, uh, but, boy, you don't want to get him on the bad side of him. No. But he knows the game, like, Unbelievable! His practices are amazing. Yeah, and and, uh, and for him, like I said, Dave Ritchie, uh, two years prior to him, so uh, the, the the coaching has stepped up. Amazing! You know, his his helpers, Chris Pomeroy, his yep. assistant coach, has been around. He's been around the hockey team for a long time as well. Right. And uh, Tony Fernandez, another guy, stepped in this year uh, and uh, as an assistant coach. So we we've got great coaching. We we brought in four, uh, well, five five rookies this year. Oh wow! And yeah, five uh, rookies came in this year, and uh, plus we got Blake Lovell returned, who played with the team about three or four years ago. Yeah, he's a good and, hockey and player. He's a very good hockey player. Yep, very good hockey player. You know, you, you look at our team, and and I think we've had, I think maybe we've got four players that have played tier two junior A, and they're always. I'm talking the Blake Lovells, the you know Chris Greers, and the right. Eddie and Nett and Malcolm and Nett. And right. Most of our players are all you know junior C players. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's so that that's even amazing uh, uh, for that to happen. But last year we, you know, our, our, our between break, uh, sorry, between uh, Blake Lovell and our other rookies, they took they counted for thirty three of our ninety five goals we took in this wow. past that's year. A, that's so impressive. a third of the scoring came from rookies. That's amazing. Yeah. So you know they they work hard, uh, they listen, and uh, we've got great goaltending as well. Uh, you know, so we're covered pretty good. It may surprise the other teams in the league. It doesn't surprise me. Right. Because, yeah, because of all those uh, things I suggested, uh, you know, there, there's great teams in this league. And, you know, uh, you know we, we came, we were top this year. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we we knocked off some, you know, good teams this year. Right. You know, at Felsenberg, we beat, uh, you know, Sogging Chores uh, twice, and we beat Seaforth. Right. It, great hockey teams. All Absolutely. Of them. And, and uh, you know, it, 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 so it's not a surprise to me anyway. The, the the dogfight between the top four teams all season long, you guys, uh, Ripley, Clinton, Sogging Shores, it was so fun to watch, honestly, the flip-flopping that happened, it was unreal, and that it came down to the last game of the season to decide it, it was, it was just it was so fun to watch. Um, I gotta ask you kind of a serious question here, and, and I don't mean, I don't want you to take this question the wrong way, because there was some suggestion throughout the season, or even like in the, in the, when the playoffs began, that... 
it was very, very surprising that you guys ended up finishing second place. And some suggested that it had something to do with the schedule being more favorable when when it comes to the Shelburne organization. Do you see any truth in that? Well, well, that's as I just said earlier, uh, Andrew. Uh, you know, we we beat four of the top five teams. You know, we we didn't. Uh, we only played Clinton once in the in their arena, and they beat us. Right. We had an off night, and that's a good good hockey team. But the other right. teams uh, uh, that, well, including Minto, we split with Minto as well, who are another good hockey club. Right. I mean, we we were in with all those teams. We beat you know Sogging twice. Uh, uh, like I said, we beat uh, Seaforth. I, I don't think it was a surprise. We played uh, uh, Shallow Lake was a team we played three times, and they're a tough team. They, you know, they're and I think you've no, spoken to that. I agree. You know, to, I agree. Hundred percent. Yeah. It, and yep. there's just there, there really isn't as far at least last year there wasn't there's no sleeping dogs in this league. I mean, no. everybody you got to be ready to go every night, or someone's going to take you out. No, that, that's yeah. just the way yeah. it is. No, you're absolutely right. Can you yeah speak to that for a second? Actually, I, I'm in, I'm glad that you brought that part up because that was going to be kind of one of my next questions. This league this past year was probably hands down the most competitive it's ever been in a season. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, years past, it's, you know, uh, there's been a couple of teams at the top in the last few, you know, the last four years. Obviously, Clinton's had a, a strong team to yeah. go against, and there's everybody else. It seems like this this past year wasn't the case. Uh, no. You know, it could have gone to, you know, eight or nine different teams the way right. it was going. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, you know, I was very impressed by that. I was very impressed with the fact that, yeah, on a given night, you didn't know what was going to happen. It wasn't like a team was coming in and you were saying, oh, yeah, okay, they're going to steamroll us, I guess, or whatever, vice versa. So Yeah. Um, no, no. It, 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 it's, it's been, you know, uh, with our hockey club, it's been a slow process. I, I got back involved as, as a GM about five years ago, and interestingly enough, we, we've been moving up the standings for the last five years. And it, right. And, and it sure as heck isn't on my – this isn't on me. It's on our coaches and our, and our players. Uh, we, you know, five years ago, we were the reverse of our record. Now we were five wins, seventeen losses. Right, of course. Yeah, and we've you know we've gone up three points, four points, six points. Yeah. You know, and then last year we went twelve points. So we, we've been getting back into the picture Good. the last five years, and and it's a it's it's a whole team, Andrew. Yeah, and when I say a whole team, it's you know it's an executive you know uh, that works. Hard, you know, Carrie and Pam uh, on our executive, uh, yeah. Bill and Walter get sponsors for the team, and right. our treasurer and our staff. You know, it, it's it's a whole it's a whole uh, team effort to to move this thing along. We've got great trainers. We got a chiropractor uh, that jumped on board about two three years ago, and Mike Clark has been with the team for years. Yeah. It's just, you know, it, it's really it's it's a team thing moving moving forward. Right. Um, could you speak, okay, so let's, I, I want to ask you, like, okay, about some guys from this season this past year. I mean, who was the biggest surprise if you had to pick a player that you were really impressed with his game last year? Well, one of our rookies really stepped forward. Uh, uh, well, actually, a number of our rookies stepped forward. Sure. Uh, Jamie Bennett was uh, certainly stepped up his, you know, he came in this year, first year of the club, and uh uh, he had 22 points in his first year, and right. he, he did great. I think he was a playoff leader as well. Right. Uh, you know, big Luke Richardson. He, he's a he's a steady hockey player uh, through and through. Uh, you know, he's not going to score you 40 goals, but uh, he's a hard worker, big guy to move, yeah. and he's got good hands as well. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, I, you know, I, I, Jeff Bratt, uh, another player, he was uh, a rookie this year, and he, he picked up 25 points this right. year in his first year. He's Josh good. Seguina, you know, he came from Durham from a couple of years ago. He's probably one of the smaller guys in the league, but yeah. he's got hands of gold. Just, you know, I, I could go on and on uh, uh, with these guys. Uh, you know, right. I love them all. I mean, they, they, they just, they're a good, good bunch of guys, and to say it's one guy or another guy, I think it's a combination of the whole team uh, working hard and working well together right no i agree um then then you know what i like i say i can speak from a bit of experience of how good a number of your players are having seen you guys play eight times and that was a uh, very very impressive to watch um i want to ask you about edward davy um you know he was a stalwart in the nets for you guys he got in to a lot of games um you know how i guess when it comes to the team like how important is it that eddie's on on any given night 
Well, was, I, I think Eddie's been with the team for a number of years. He's, you know, a stalwart goaltender, no question about that. And right. he, he works hard. He, he's focused. He's, uh, he's a little eccentric with his goaltending. It's just the way he is. Yeah. Uh, great guy. And, uh, he works at his game. And, uh, you know, that, that's why he's been one of the better goalies in this league, if not the best goalie in the league, in my opinion, right. uh, for a number of years. Uh, there's, uh, he, he works on what he does. And, uh, you know, we've got two other goalies that are just as good, and Malcolm Young and uh, Ryan Mantle. They both, uh, right. you know, we, we had three goalies going this year, uh, just, you know, time commitment-wise. It's, uh, we're, we're in good shape that way. Do you do you feel as as a as a general manager of a ho- of the of one of the hockey clubs in the league? Do you feel like having multiple options in the net is is crucial? Well, I think it it, it really is. Uh, you know, especially nowadays, you know, players working and commitments aren't always there. Especially right. goaltending, it was a bit of a uh, a tough swing for us this year because we had to drop out one of the, the goaltenders this year uh, in league. We, we kept all three of ours. Shortened our roster on the on the outside right. because they, they commit themselves uh, uh, in terms of practice and that, but they can't be there all the time. Sure. So that's why we had to roll with three, three goalies. But Eddie played the most games. Yeah. So uh, and, and he was under three uh, goals against. I think it was two two ninety four right. average uh, goals against this year. Yeah. Which is our, our, you know we're I think we were fourth in the league last uh, this past season in goals against. I think uh, so, I think you might be right on that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Is, you know, very proud of all our, our, our goaltenders this year, including Eddie. Absolutely. No, I couldn't agree with you more. Eddie is, uh, is he's an unbelievable goalie, heck of a stand-up guy, and uh, yeah, it was really a pleasure to get to meet him and talk with him last year. Um, Want to take you to the playoff series against Minto. I mean, obviously, I was there at the forefront, as were yeah. you, and it, it was honestly probably one of the best, best of seven series I've ever been a part of, I've ever witnessed, I've ever seen. And to be to be at the the center of the of the, of the whole thing and got, getting to watch it from my vantage point and getting to call it and describe the action as it was happening was was pretty uh, wild to, to say the least. Um, take me through that series from from your perspective. Um, you know what what needed to happen differently maybe that might have swung it the series in your guys' favor. Yeah, 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 to be honest with you, I. I I thought we were going to end up with Durham to start with the last game of the year, but sure. as we talked about earlier, with luck now, you know, upset them right. the last game. We ended up getting Minto, right. and uh, Minto's a loaded team. Uh, there's no two ways about it. You know, Kowalik, uh, F- you know, Pfeffer, and, and of course Zach Graham and Tommy Tommy Hogard. I mean, right. they account for a, they got a lot of firepower on they, that team. No question no, about it. They no got question. good goaltending. Yep. They picked up Lance uh, from the uh, Lower Rocks that was huge. late in the year. Yeah, he's a, a a good good defenseman as well. But right. you know this 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 team uh, uh, we were going against wasn't uh, uh, what I consider a seven place team. They're right up in the pack, but the rest of the teams are up in the top four. No question about that. And right. uh, uh, we knew we were in the battle. And, and you know a tip of the puck going one way in game six, and the overtime could have slanted dust uh, having a game seven. Those sorts of things happened. It was great hockey, really good hockey. And uh, I, you know, tip my hat off to the, the mental players because they they worked hard, and uh, they earned it as well. Right? No, yeah, it was just it was so good. You know what I mean? Like to go back, I would just love to be able to go back and and redo it all again because it was like I could have gone on for another six games of that series the way it was going. Like it was just like the it, it, you couldn't have picked a better ending. Obviously, from Shelburne's end, they could have picked a better ending in Game Six, but the fact that it did go to double overtime for a winner for the series clincher. Like you can't write that stuff that good, you know what I mean? Yeah, d- definitely. It, it, it seems to be going across the board too. That first round, it, you know, you look at Durham going seven games with uh, right. Ripley up there. They had a had a had a great series, and Soggy and and, and Tilsenberg going at her. Uh, you know, another great you know series. I mean, it, it was it was just it, and of course the C fours and their their neighbors next door in Clinton. Right. It was another great series. I mean, it was great hockey going on everywhere. Yeah, no, I. It was it's just so cool, and it was it, it was interesting for me because it was like I was following Minto all year, but it was like I wish I could have been in like eight different places at once. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Good hockey teams all the way through there. Uh, you know, 
you just you just had to bring your A game and and hopefully you got through and uh, that that's the way it worked and uh, good not much picking between the teams at all. No, uh, some teams a little more loaded up. Uh, you know, uh, firepower wise, we're, we're probably not as uh, we work hard and that's what gets us through. We, you know, we yeah. you know sniper wise, we don't have top goal scorers in terms of league, but uh, certainly nobody's nobody's going to outwork us. No, you you got a ton of talent over there, and it's something to be proud of. Absolutely. Um, was there any one team, Barry, that you would say surprised you last year in terms of maybe where they stood in the standings overall? Maybe. Boy, you know, I I can't really suggest anybody in particular. Uh, I thought uh, you know Shell Lake should have been up a little higher in the standings. I agree with they that. They had a lot of close games, uh, um, but the, the the rest of the teams were you know from. Uh, uh, Tavistock, you know, slid, slid in that ninth spot, and and they could have very well have been, you know, up there as well. It, it yeah. was, yeah, I I really can't say any team in particular surprised me uh, with the the or you know their what they didn't do or did right. do. But yeah, it was just uh, all around a very competitive season, and and uh, you know this league too, you get one or two guys out of your lineup for a game, it makes a big difference. Well, right? for sure, absolutely, yeah. no question about it. Um. Barry, uh, okay, so let's let me ask you about next season because and when whether or not it's even going to happen. Like, what is your current mindset on 2020-2021 WA Senior AA Men's Hockey? Well, at this stage, you know, I, I don't see it. Ha- I don't see it happening uh, in October. Much to my chagrin, I'd, I'd love to see it happen. Oh, I, I just know. don't see it happen uh, under current uh, conditions we've got with uh, COVID-19. Uh, right. I, I don't know. I, 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 w- I certainly wouldn't want to jeopardize anybody's health. No. Uh, going forward, I, I, the fans, same thing. How, how, how are you going to operate this? It's near impossible, and, and this is why uh, it, it's a struggle. Uh, you know, I certainly uh, wouldn't want to see anybody, as I mentioned, their health put at risk and the, uh, by having, you know, getting infected by one of the other players and vice versa. Sure, and like I, one of the things that was also mentioned to me too is about how, like how important it is when it comes to the uh, team operation from local business sponsorship. Yeah, and and we're, we're fortunate, you know. I, I know in our club with uh, you know Bill and Walter, they're banging on doors, and we've got very good corporate sponsors now in right. in uh, Shelburne uh, throughout the league, but. You know, these are the same small businesses that have been shut down in right. a lot of these cases, right? And they just don't have the door in me, I think, a lot of these businesses exactly. to uh, to get by. We, we've we been very prudent with our, our club because, uh, you know, like I said, you know, five, six years ago, we, we were in a, not in a very good condition uh, even operating going forward when they got back in the ball. It, it's, uh, all the players uh, have chipped in over the years. Our, our players... Uh, Pay for their insurance, even, and I don't know if the rest of the teams in the league do this, but right. we, our guys uh, do. Oh, okay, and, I see. Yep, yeah, yeah, and that's what they—it's they, their part of the the deal. I'm not suggesting that's going to go on forever, but uh, they've they've all got together and uh, helped out for the last three, four years when we've had it. So uh, uh, they're forking out 125 bucks wow. and covering their their own insurance. So it, it's uh, it's a great thing, and sh- it just shows you the the the. Uh, the players' involvement with our hockey club, anyway, right. and uh, it, it's uh, yeah, it, it's going to be tough for sponsors no uh, going forward. I, I really foresee that happening. Yeah, no, I I agree with you too. I, I mean that that is the tough thing. It's like, will that local business have that disposable income, let's say, to be able to say, oh, we're going to give X amount of dollars to this hockey team? Like that that just may not be in the cards, um, yeah. realistically speaking. Um, what is what is the draw to want to play for the Shelburne Muskies? Why why would anybody want to play for the Shelburne Muskies? Sum that up for me. Well, I, I think for, for one, our club has been the Muskies. Well, the Shelburne Muskies, as far as I know, we, I, I was uh, actually got, did some research on the Muskies uh, earlier this year, and the Muskie name came up in 1963 in newspaper articles. All right. So, but the, the team was called the seniors prior to that, and right. uh, we we're well over 100 years of senior hockey in Shelburne. Wow. So, uh, we've got a great executive. We've got great players. The uh, uh, it's a social, and, and and it's a 
meeting friends and, 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 you know, being a part of something. And I think that's important for the players and, and, and the girlfriends and the wives as well, because they, right. they, they're in the, they also give up a lot. Sure. Uh, throughout the, uh, throughout the winter. Uh, so it, it's, there's a, it's a combination of a whole pile of things like that. And, right. uh, No, I, I, no, I absolutely agree with you on that, uh, Barry. No, I mean, you know, you guys are a terrific hockey club and you had a lot to be proud of from last season. And, uh, I really enjoyed watching you guys play. I, I really enjoyed getting to meet all of the Shelburne Muskie players that I did and got to talk with and continue yeah. to talk with after this and, and especially yourself. So I want to thank you guys. Honestly, I had a lot of nice things to say about you guys when the, when the game ended in game six and I meant every word and, uh, you know, if the season does go whenever it goes, uh, I do look forward to coming back to Shelburne and uh, being able to put the spotlight back in Shelburne because that was really fun. So uh, there's a lot yeah. of things, a lot of things that I'm really excited about doing, and I'm hoping they all get to come to fruition eventually. So yeah, yeah, and, and we're in the same boat. You know, we we you know we have our annual cancer game. We donated four thousand dollars last year to the cancer, and the rink's filled. Yeah. And we've been doing that for the last you know three three years. We got we started a hockey camp for the minor. Uh, kids this past uh, January and uh, a two day camp for for those kids. There our players all put on uh, for it uh, for the kids in minor hockey. Great connection for the for the the muskies and minor hockey. And right. uh, these are the sorts of community things that are they're so important to have uh, w- with a hockey club in, in sure. a league like this. No, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Barry, it's been uh, great having you on the show. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on and discussing hockey with us. And uh, you're welcome back anytime. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely. And thank you. And keep up the good work. And uh, I know the, the the Muskies all follow you. And I'm sure most of the teams, if not all of them, uh, if they're not following, they should be following you because uh, you do a fantastic job for the league. And I, I appreciate it. And the, and I know the Muskies do. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank you very much for the kind words. I do honestly appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon again, okay, Barry? Yep. All right. So once again, we want to say thank you to Barry Trude of the Shelburne Muskies, general manager of the club, for joining us here on the podcast. Uh, it was great having him on, and we really do appreciate his time, and we look forward to having him on again. Um, in terms of our next guest, like I say, on Monday, it is uh, Trevor Lord and uh, Andrew Whalen of the Allura Rocks. They are the next hosts, or next guests, <laughs> of the WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League. So we want to thank Barry Trude for joining us. We want to thank Mitch Scott of Starting Lineup Uniform and Apparel. And I want to thank all of you for watching, once again, the WOA Senior AA Men's La Hockey League podcast, episode number eight. Uh, my name is Andrew Rogers, and I'm the host, and we will see you next time. Take care. Have a nice weekend.